Hey, this is Jody with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. Today we're doing a 6G 2-inch Schedule 80 pipe. And just going to manage to get the root pass in today, and we'll take care of the hot pass and the fill passes in future videos. First thing we're going to do is do a little fit up and tack. I've already cleaned it off, cleaned all the mill scale off about a half inch back from where the weld's going to be. I like to use these little spacers, these little homemade spacers that I'm going to show you here. Very simple. You just bend a little L in uh, four pieces and, uh, you know, snip it with some dikes, make four of them, and then uh, we're going to grind them flat on one side. And I'll show you that in just a sec. Little miniature bolt cutters, too, come in really handy for cutting the one-eighth wire. Save you on the carpal tunnel years down the road. Once I got four of them, then I'm just going to one by one sand flat spots on the on the uh, the bent piece, and I'll show you why I'm doing that. You probably figured it out already, but I'll show you why later. Because when uh, if you leave them all in, they get uh, really tight in there from the weld shrinkage, and they're hard to get out otherwise. So I'm going to put uh, put four spacers on using some. I'm using some aluminum foil tape. Duct tape works. And some jobs actually have special chloride-free tape that they'll make you use, especially nuclear plants. But I'm not working in a nuclear plant today. I'm just getting by. All right. Now I'm, I'm fitting mine together in a little uh, trough here on the table. The most important thing, though, is not the outside diameter to line up, is the inside. But this is close enough today that the, these are counterboard, and uh, they're they're pretty close even lining up the outside. Now for the first tack here, I'm just going to use this little forward and back technique. I've shown this before. A 1 8 rod with a 1 8 gap, almost no land, just about a 30 second land. It works pretty good. And about 85 to 95 amps is what it takes to, to make that happen on the root pass. Depends on if you've got a tight 1 8 or a loose 1 8. You want, it, you want the 1 8 gap to be uh, so that the rod doesn't fall through. Another way to do it is just was using this little dip technique with a 332nd rod and that takes a little bit less amperage. Using the 332nd rod with a 1 8 gap and a dip and keyhole technique is kind of a, a little bit more of a forgiving technique than uh, the lay wire because that the gap doesn't have to be just right and it's a little slower process as you're positioning your body on the 6G, but we're going to talk about both as we do it. Now here's why I mentioned if I grind that flat spot on these little spacers, that would be really tight and all I got to do is twist it half a turn and it comes right out. I found keeping a set of those in my box is, is just comes in really handy for fitting up joints like this. And here's a, that uh, lay wire technique again. All right, we've got all four tacks. And now you get to feather the tacks a little bit. I don't feather them a lot. A lot of people feather them way on back. I've found that kind of helps to cause suck back sometimes. So I just, I'm using a file today just because some jobs will actually not let you use a grinder and it will only let you use a file. So I uh, figure you know how to grind. So I'm just going to file them a little bit. Now, one of the most important things is figuring out how high to put the test. Because if you put it too high, you won't be able to see the top. If you put it too low, you'll be really uncomfortable or you'll have to kneel down to get to the bottom and then stand up as you make the transition if you're wanting to burn a whole stick rod without stopping. That's a problem. So the setting it at the right height is a big, big deal. Now, some jobs will actually let you stand on a little platform when you're halfway up. They're all different. The weld test supervisors all have different opinions on how hard or how accommodating they want to be but you better be prepared to do it most any way. Most, for the most part though, they will let you set the height, but once you set it, it's set. They won't let you move it typically after you set the height. That's part of the code is the 6G position it can't be moved once, once you start welding. And coming up the, the hard side, you're either going to have to figure out how to use your left hand or kind of contort and use your right hand and both of them have their own pluses and minuses. I take a lot of dry runs. What I'm doing here, I'm trying to figure, figure out, am I going to be in a jam? Is my lower back going to be hurting? Am I going to be shaking by the time I get here? Can I see this angle? 
Do I have line of sight on the top for both sides? Am I, you know, all that kind of stuff. And you want to do all this before you tell the guy you're ready to weld the root pass because, like I said, once you lock it in position, typically that's it. Some, some jobs will even stamp with a unique stamp the top of your pipe and might even have you tack the fixture to where they know that it hadn't been moved when they're off because they're, they're going to be supervising 10 to 20 or 30 people sometimes. And so uh, they, they, that's their way of ensuring that you're not rotating or moving the, the pipe up and down once you get it where you need it. So spend enough time getting it where you need it where you can get to the bottom and the top like you need to. All right, enough of that. Now I'm going to speed this up so you can kind of see the body positioning change a little bit as we go. And coming off the bottom, this little technique works really good if you have your fit up right, your gap right, and your amperage right. Just forward and back, forward and back. It's even forgiving enough that you can come back farther than, you know, you don't have to come back at the same distance every time. It still works. You can see me changing, changing positioning as I get around this thing. That's what's hard about a 6G. And coming off the left hand side, again, you've either got to put the torch in your left hand or you got to figure out how to do it with your right hand if the left hand you just can't make it work. But same technique, a little forward and back, keeping a good tight arc and keeping a little pressure on that 1 8 rod into the puddle. Now I've shown you what it happens when that works good. That's the good side of that lay wire technique. I'm going to show you a little bit of some problems you can have now. You lose you lose contact there from not keeping pressure in the puddle and it wants to keyhole and melt. It's going to do it again here. There we go. You got to kind of jam, get it jammed back in there. And if you're on the top and it does that, it's really no big deal. It'll all blend together and, and fall through, but it can cause you little lumps and, and whatnot and definitely not what you want. So now we're going to look at the uh, dip keyhole technique using a 332nd rod. A little bit less amperage, probably about 75 amps here. 70 probably would have even worked. You don't want to keyhole a whole lot. You want to keep the rod in there often to prevent the keyhole from opening up a lot. And you want to push just a little bit of rod in each time that you dip to satisfy the puddle. You don't want to starve the puddle or coming up on the bottom you will have a concave uh, root pass or otherwise known as suck back. And there's limits to how much you can have. Some, some test uh, supervisors will let you skate on a little bit, but if it's pretty deep, you're, you're, you're going to be done. As you tie in, just keep going, keep dipping, keep adding rod, go, go kind of slow to make sure everything fuses in together. And then you snap out if you're using an air-cooled dry rig. Here's another angle. Use some different camera angles here. We're set the camera up at all kind of different angles coming up the bottom of this thing. See it try if I if I hang too long out without adding rod that keyhole opens up more. And you'll be inconsistent and you'll you'll have a concavity on the inside if you let it get too far out of hand. Alright here different hand coming up the top here. Really easy on the top. You can go just a little bit wider and you're not really worried about pushing any uh, rod too much inside. It, it, the gravity will pull it inside, no problem on the top. You just watch those corners, watch them barely keyhole a little bit and it's a pretty sure way of putting root pass in because you are watching those beveled corners each time you dip and you're seeing that it breaks the walls down. Slow down just a little bit when you get to the tack and make sure everything blends together. Make sure you consume the first part of that route and then there you go. I got so many arc shots here I might as well just show you more than more than is needed. You can always fast forward through this if, you, if you've seen what you need to see already. You can look at the the land I put on that uh, bevel there. This is a 37 and a half degree bevel, again, two inch Schedule 80 pipe, I've just barely got a land on there, probably not even a 32nd of an inch. You can play with that a little bit. Most, uh, I, I actually like a feather edge for most 
for most pipe welding, but having a 30 second is not a big deal either. You have a little bit of leeway there. If you've got a feather edge, you really do have to watch that keyhole. It can get out of hand with you. All right, so I took a stab at the uh, hot pass. I wasn't really happy with the way that the shots came out or the way it was going in, so I'm going to redo those for next video, but I figured I'd show you what I had so far here. Here's the lay wire technique using just about 5 or 10 more amps than I used for the root. I've got the electrode extended way out further than I need it just for the sake of filming so the cup wouldn't block the view. And then I'll show you this technique also. Basically, it's the same except for I'm just feeding a little bit of wire in each time and then removing it from the puddle each time I come across. Both, both techniques have their, their pros and cons, but we will go more into depth on that in the part two of this video. I did go ahead and weld these out with a stick, and so then I cut it right next to the weld just so you could get a peek at the root pass and see that it is poking through there pretty good. That's it for today. Stay tuned for part two of this video and also every other weekly video at WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. Thanks for watching.